Okay. I feel like I'm missing some of my committee chairs. You are definitely missing two of them, um, TRS and membership. Um, right. So, yep, you are definitely. I've got the coffee, but where are the donuts? <laughs> yes, we miss those, don't we, by not meeting together? Hmm. Keeping that 14 pounds, the COVID-14 down just a little. <laughs> that, that many pounds, huh? Oh, dear. I've heard everything from 12 to 18. Wow, yeah. I know, I know I acquired a few of those. <laughs> I did too. Trying not to. Well, I think I'm going to, going to start and hopefully our committee chairs, the rest of the committee chairs will join us in a few minutes here. Okay, I'm going to call the meeting of the Regional Advisory Council to order. Um, do we have a quorum, Melissa? We do. Yes? Yes, yep. Okay. Okay. Um, we have the agenda in front of you. Are there any additions or corrections to the agenda? Hearing none, uh, with the uh, minutes from our last meeting, are there any additions or corrections to those? Um, by the way, just um, for anybody that's new, um, the link to all these meeting, uh, to the agenda and the meeting minutes is always on that same email you get that tells you about the actual meeting. It's a little further down and just a link and click on it and you can get these materials. Hearing no additions or corrections, may I have a motion to approve the agenda in minutes? I so move, Eric. Thank, thank you, Eric. I right. second. Marilyn seconds. Marilyn seconds. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. The ayes have it. The agenda and minutes are approved. Do we have any public comments today, Melissa? I didn't receive any, um, and neither did Jody. Of course, okay. Jody is not here today. He is um, taking care of family members in um, his home state. So, um, we are wishing him the best and hoping for um, his parents to get better and miss him terribly. Uh, so, um, no, and I will just go ahead since um, we don't have a real full agenda today. I might just open it up to the few people from the community who are on the call and if they wanted to share anything um, from their community perspective, just briefly. And if not, we're good. I think we're good. We're good. Okay. Well, let's move on to our presentations. We always look forward to hear, hearing from our providers. Um, and this morning we have Cynthia Margiata from Pearls. Pearls is one of our newer programs. And so uh, we're excited to hear about how, how it's developing, how it's moving along. So Cynthia, you have the floor. Hey, I'm impressed you can pronounce my last name correctly. I took a stab at it and wondered <laughs> if, how I did. I realized I've known you for many years and I never knew your last name. 
I'm, I'm known in the community as Cynthia. It's just easier, I think, for everyone. So um, anyway, I am Cynthia Margiana with the Pearls Program of Colorado. And thanks to the Area Agency on Aging, we have now broadened here to Colorado. Um, next slide, please. It's um, a program that's been around for approximately 11 years now. And in most states, working with the Area Agency on Aging. So what PEARL stands for is Program Encouraging Active Rewarding Lives for Seniors. It's specifically oriented to people over 60, but does work with people who have chronic illnesses such as epilepsy and other issues. Next slide, please. So it's a, it's a five month, 19 week program to address and manage depression and anxiety for older adults. It's about empowering them to feel like they don't have to live with depression. Next slide, please. So prior to COVID, they said that depression affected about 20% of people over 65. I have here a study actually that was done by, a, um, let's see, for Medicare by a program that's called kff.org. You can look online and find this study, but they are saying that now um, among the older adults, age 65 and older, close to half um, said that they worry and stress um, about the COVID vaccine and the virus, and that it has had a negative impact on their mental health. Uh, so that's a big issue. It's only getting bigger. Um, people like Mary Lynn, am I pronouncing it correctly this time, Mary Lynn? I, can, I cannot hear you on. That is correct. That's what my mother named me, but I go by the name of Marilyn. Okay, so Marilyn. Marilyn, that's, you know, like you said, you feel isolated. You, you're going crazy. Um, well, imagine, imagine if that were true for you for years. Imagine anybody for, you know, isolated. It's it's a scary process, and so many older people experience that. Um, next slide, please. So this is a, um, a study that was done by the National Institute of Mental Health about depression and mortality. If you look at it, that gets very diff It gets more and more difficult for especially white males as they age, but it's it affects everyone, really. Next slide, please. So we have only been around, really, since September. September 1, here in the Springs, El Paso County. And so our referral trends since then, this shows you some of where we're getting our referrals. Surprising to us, I think, is the amount of people that are being referred mostly from family, themselves, and from friends. And of course, my phone rings, and I, I apologize. There. But then there's also different programs like Area Agency on Aging, uh, DHS, and then a few other programs in the community as well. So we appreciate all of those referrals. It's keeping our numbers up unfortunately, because um, it'd be better for people's mental health if they didn't have that. Does that make sense, that slide there to y'all? Yes. Great. Any questions about it? No? OK. Next slide, please. Let's see. So there's a whole lot of things that we offer to the self-isolated. I just want to point out a few of those. We aim 
to um, decrease some of the depressive behaviors that people experience through education. We focus on teaching them skills that help make lasting changes so that they can move on from us. It's not like they become dependent on us. And then we deliver services in their home, um, wherever that is. It could be assisted living, it could be children's homes, and it gives us an opportunity to connect with them as well as their families. We see their living environments. We are working with like one woman now who says to people that she's a hoarder. Um, working with that, in her home and seeing the situation and then helping her to make changes that she wants to make, to make, to help her feel more healthy in her own way. Next slide, please. So this is, uh, of course, we changed the name and the age and all of that good stuff for you, okay? Um, and this is not a real picture, I will tell you honestly. Um, but this gives you an example of one of the clients that we worked with. So when we first met her, she felt like her mental health was very poor. Uh, she did some social activities, but some rare visits. Uh, and then no physical activity whatsoever sort of what we would call, you know, um, bed to chair existence. And then some pleasant activities in the home alone by herself. And her PHQ-9, do you all know what that is? No. Why don't you explain it, Cindy? I'd be glad. Uh, PHQ is, you know, the patient health questionnaire. It's a nine question questionnaire that gives us an, an idea of their mental health, how they're feeling, what they're involved in, and where they might want to go um, as far as supporting themselves. So a PHQ-9, it's minor depression when it's seven. It can get very high. I've had people with Oh, 15, 16, which is a pretty high number for the PHQ-9. So it means they're more depressed. And then during and after the PEARLS program, she just completed recently. So she finds that her health is very good. She's still working on losing a little weight, to be honest. But And then she's very active communicating and visiting with friends and family, mostly on the phone right now. And then she goes outdoors, she goes to lunch, um, the outdoor lunches, going to her church now, which they offer services at night, uh, not at night, but outdoors on their yard. And then she makes soup for the kitchen, the soup kitchen that she's involved with for her church. And then she does go on walks. Yes, they're short distances. Um, and does some exercise, some physical exercise. And then she's increased the activities, the, the pleasant activities that she's in, enjoyed. Um, she does do crocheting, and that's a picture of a lady with crocheting. Um, but she's increased her activities, her enjoyment of life. Um, we all need those. And at this point, her PHQ-9 is a score of zero. We expect it to stay near that. If not on that, she does have my phone number if there's ever a need and she can continue contact with me. Next slide, please. So what we do is we we facilitate some self change. Um, and what we do, oh, I keep forgetting to turn it off. Sorry. Yeah. Somebody needs to tell me to turn it off. Anyway, 
Um, um, we do facilitate some self-change. And the way that we do that is go through a, a debriefing. Um, we talk and we ask for feedback on how it went during the past week or month. It depends on how long it's been since we've seen them. Um, and we encourage them to do a self-assessment. How did, how do you feel it went? Do you, were you able to um, go through some of your projects that you wanted to do? Um, what do you need to change? What went well? Those kinds of things. And then, you know, we talk, we encourage them to continue that and help them to feel like they're able to do things, able to continue this program. So that's, that's what a debriefing is about. And then next slide, please. Wrong way. <laughs> so how does that all work? Um, so we offer practical solutions and suggestions that might help to make changes. And I, I really don't know if you all know, but we try to encourage three or four things that really make a difference for people who are depressed. So the first most important thing is the last thing on that list. And we focus on the, their wishes. What changes does that person want to make? Not what changes I want to make. Like the woman who says she's a hoarder. It's not what I want her to do. It's what she wants to do. What are her wishes? And then for people who are not depressed, the other three things, they, folks do those things. We all have things that we work on. I'm going to turn the sound off and I apologize. Oh, it's telling me it's time for this meeting. Sorry. Um, so folks who are not depressed are do these kinds of things. They do pleasant activities. You know, we have all, we need something to look forward to. We have to have, even if it's down the road, we have to have stuff that we are looking forward to. It might be taking a jewelry class next week or a trip and when COVID is over to Italy. So we have things that we look forward to. Without that, depression increases greatly. And then social interaction. Very few people are, are hermits. You know? And I know some of us here are probably introverts, but even as an introvert, you need some people in your life. You know? and we're meant to have people in our lives. And then exercise. And I, I'll give myself as an example. I like to do that. Um, exercise, I hate exercise. I have always hated exercise. But I exercise, and for folks who know me, I exercise approximately every, for an hour um, every day. And I share with folks that are in our program that as much as I hate it, the after effects of increasing my mood are amazing. And it's, it makes me feel better. It helps me to feel like I have achieved something. I have done something that is good for me. Um, I ride my stationary bike about eight to 10 miles every day, which is a healthy thing to do. And I think it decreases my depression. Next, please. So who are our team? We have a small team. We have a small grant and a small team. So we have Dr. Margiata. Yes, he is my husband. Um, he's a doctor, he has a doctorate in psychology. 
He works full time at the state hospital. He does assessments of mental health issues, but his focus has always been depression in the elderly. And to be very honest, he did do his doctorate papers um, on depression in the elderly. And so you can find those that, that book in the library. And then Molly Cleaver, that's how you pronounce her last name. She's a nurse practitioner where a majority of the people she works with are the over 60 crowd. And so she helps with the medication questions or issues. And then myself, I'm a geriatric social worker. I've worked in geriatrics for about 40 some odd years. And then last but not least, it's you guys, the, the public, the people at Area Agency on Aging. They're a very important group that help with our team because they're the ones who can talk to people and say, you know, I think this program might help you. you talk to your friends who are sad or isolating themselves at home. You know, your coworkers, people like that, that may, may, keep, may be staying at home alone more than they need to. Just because you're over 60 doesn't mean you deserve to be depressed. Next slide, please. So if you think that you know somebody who is experiencing depression, I don't want to sound like an ad, but let's help them. Let's work together and make a difference in their lives because really, this is a program to encourage active rewarding lives for seniors. And it's been around long enough that it's here to stay, I think. So with that, I really appreciate your time. Do any of you have any questions? I did, uh, do you cover Park and Teller County also? Unfortunately, no, not yet. We are hoping to expand in the next couple of years. Um, it's just El Paso County at this point. Can they move to El Paso? <laughs> yes, no, maybe never. What have you found now? You're a new program. So what are, what are some of the challenges as a new program? Um, I think as a new program, some of the challenges are, are really working with some of the other programs um, in El Paso County. They, oh, you know, the newbies, they don't get the referrals that some of the other agencies that have been around a long time do get. So that might be one of my challenges. Um, let's see, other challenges are you know, making sure I'm able to get to everybody on a regular basis. Uh, I'm one person and driving distances. El Paso County is a large county. So that might be one of my other challenges. So do you see people once a week? And is it you that sees them or how I, does that I, work? Yes. Um, so... Uh, we start out, it's about a 19-week program, give or take, and it depends on their ability, you know, their interest or their ability to meet with me. We have one lady that's right now, she's in rehab. Um, and so we start out about once a week for three or four weeks. Then we go to bi-weekly, then we go to monthly, then we go to as they need it. So slowly moving out of their lives, encouraging them to be with friends and do things that on their own. Other questions from the REC members? Is there one on chat? Let me check chat. Um, no, that's not a question. 
There's um, a comment, uh, Cynthia, if you would put your email in um, the chat and also you can, uh, if you can do it in chat or you can send it to me later, uh, your website address too. Oh, okay. Um, we would like to expand the program. There is one that just came up. We'd like to expand our program at some point. Um, so that we can also work in other counties, uh, as well as help more people here. And right now, it's just me going out to their homes. We'll we'll have to see how that can work. Hi, Cynthia. I'm Jolene. I'm the next presenter at the Fountain Valley Senior Center. But if you were to email me a flyer. We would be more than happy to send that in our next newsletter that goes out to over 850 seniors in the Fountain Valley area. So um, maybe help you with getting your name out there to more of the senior population. That would be great, Jolene. I met with one of your coworkers about a month ago. Oh, great. M Mark? Um, very sweet, extroverted. I think it might be Mark. I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah, but we can help connect you with the southern part of the county. I would love to send you one. Yes, thank you. I'll put all of that info in there when we're all done talking. Thank you. I will add that Cynthia, when she incorporated Pearls, she calls it Pearls of Colorado, because this is really one of the only um, evidence-based in-home programs for supporting people um, who have, you know, uh, kind of on the depression scale. And so she's being very humble and, and quiet about the idea of expansion, but it has always been um, on her mind to be able to serve more than El Paso County. So um, the more we can do to help make that work uh, in other areas and keep El Paso County going strong, the better. I, I would like that very much. Thank you, Melissa. Yes, I, sorry, <laughs> I, I tend to be more, I'm extroverted, but <laughs> don't, I can't talk I, about myself very much. So it's weird stuff. Um, but if you I, have, um, if you, if you have any flyers or anything as well, um, or even the PowerPoint presentation, if you can send them um, to the group, I would like to use them. I'm with the DHS, and so I would like to use them to send to like our adult protective service units and some of those areas so that they can also have that information as they're going out into individuals' homes to help with the total well-being of individuals, um, because I think that's a, a huge component of that. So yes, thank DHS you. DHS is one of the folks that does make a lot of referrals to us. Yeah. And unfortunately, no offense, but I have made referrals to y'all. Yeah, no, <laughs> absolutely. And, and I think that um, I'm not exactly sure who all has that information within DHS, but I want to make sure that um, all who c could utilize it have it available to them. So um, certainly if you can send information, um, I would like to be able to kind of forward that to key individuals within DHS to make sure that it's being fully utilized. Great. I would appreciate that. Yes. Yes. That would be wonderful. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Cynthia. And we, one of the things we've always talked about is these connections that are made between different organizations at these meetings. And so, um, so happy people spoke up and we're going to help you get the word out um, to, for your wonderful new service. Well, thank you. Thank you, everyone. And I appreciate the grant. I, I know it's for you all, the grant has really helped me to be able to provide this to people. Um, I, I think it's very useful. And I, I, I believe it or not, years ago, I attended some of your meetings via sitting at the front desk. <laughs> I am a, a big supporter. Joe Ruth and I are probably the longest term volunteers with PPACG, uh, the Area Agency on Aging specifically. And um, I appreciate your support. Thank you very much, everyone. 
Thank you. And please feel free to contact me anytime. If you know of someone, I would love to be able to help them and service them. Thanks to the grant, we don't have to ask for finances. And so we can serve more people who don't have money. And I think that's a very, very important part of what we offer. So thank you. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Cynthia. We're going to move on to um, Jolene Hausman is here from the Fountain Valley Senior Center. I know uh, uh, maybe it's two years already back. We came out to visit your center. We loved uh, to meet everybody there and see what was going on. Um, so um, Jolene, well, but you have the floor. Thank you. Melissa, can you turn over screen sharing? It says I can't share until you stop sharing. Oh, there we go. Okay, hopefully next year when I present, you guys can come down to the center again because I absolutely love having you. And um, one of my favorite things in life to do is feed people treats. So um, there'll be lots of good food when you guys come. But I'm Jolene and I'm the executive director of Found Valley Senior Center. I've been there now for about two and a half years. And our mission is to provide services and activities to older adults, which enhance dignity, support independence, and encourage involvement in the community. Um, I did present at the April meeting last year, so it was just the beginning of COVID. And so I did wanna let you guys know our plan for reopening. Right now, there is no anticipated opening date. Um, we're really just waiting for guidance from either funders, the state, or the feds on what regulations are going to be put in place for that. We are getting closer and closer because now El Paso County has 70% of the 70 and over population vaccinated, but we really serve 60 and up, so we have to wait till those numbers are better for the health and safety of all of our members. Um, when we do reopen, it will be likely that there'll be one ingress door and one egress door, um, temperature and symptom checks, documentation, and we did invest in a lot of disposable cups and silverware so that we don't have to wash anything that touches people's mouths just to ensure safety. Um, it, it's going to be interesting when we reopen because what we've seen in our parking lot activities is the first thing people do is pull down their mask because they can't hear each other and they run to hug each other. So when we do parking lot activities, I never thought my role would be as a bouncer, like at a nightclub, but um, I now run around and I'm like, Mary, Beth, don't touch each other, like stay in your own parking spot and like stay away from each other. So it's really interesting being a senior citizen bouncer. I think I'm gonna add that to my resume. Um, so I wanna go over the services that we provide and how COVID has changed those services. We've quickly adapted to the COVID pandemic to ensure that seniors are still taken care of both um, through nutrition, transportation, and as much socialization as possible. So prior to COVID, we averaged 75 meals daily. During COVID, we actually average over 100 people that are asking for meals. It's been one of the more shocking developments of COVID of just how high the food insecurity is. And, um, you know, for seniors that are at high risk, going to the grocery store is like playing Russian roulette because you don't know who's standing next to you or if they're going to make you sick. So seniors have um, greatly increased their dependence on the grab and goes and food delivery systems in our community. For our homebound seniors that normally bring tra uh, ride transportation into the center, or our homebound meal participants, we not only give them the Connections Cafe 
weekly grab and goes, but we've been able to augment the meals through PPACG and the AAA, where they receive an additional um, shelf stable five day emergency supply. So any seniors in our area that don't drive, they're actually getting 10 meals per week and the meals are really substantial. So somebody could actually be sustained through just the meals that we're providing. That way, anyone that's worried about going out absolutely does not have to go out. We took the food insecurity issue away. We are still providing transportation um, to anyone over 60 through AAA funds. And then we have 5310 and PPRTA funds for anyone disabled under the age of 60. Um, at the beginning of COVID through AAA funds, thank you. We love your funds, by the way. Um, we have installed uh, anti-microbacterial film on all the high touch surface areas in the vehicles and the senior center. So it actually kills germs without having to be cleaned. We still do clean, but it's just a secondary measure. So any high touch surface now has a antimicrobacterial film. And then we have huge cleaning guidelines. I don't think I've ever bought so much um, Clorox wipes and um, hospital grade cleaning supplies for our vehicles. We are still under the state CDOT safer to ride guidelines and they have guidelines in place of how many passengers can be on a vehicle at a time given the space of the vehicle. So we currently can only have a maximum of two passengers on most of our vehicles and some of our vehicles can only have one. We are, our number one ride priority is dialysis because if people miss a dialysis appointment, more than two, they could actually pass away. So that's always the number one. And right now our second priority is vaccination appointments. And we've worked with the County Health Department and Peak Vista on getting um, seniors vaccinated. It's been interesting though, because we were asked by the county, like, why can't you just load up a vehicle of 15 people and take them to an appointment? But we can't put 15 seniors all together in the same airspace and take them to an appointment. So it's a lot of um, shuttling around. Uh, Found Valley Senior Center and Vita and Silver Key have um, jo a joint vaccination hotline so if in, for transportation, if anybody needs a ride for a vaccination appointment, they can call the number that's on the screen. And one of the three agencies, we're doing it based on geographical areas to be more effective. And we haven't had to turn down one single ride due to capacity. So we've ensured that any senior in our area that wants a ride gets a ride to the vaccine. Um, we normally have a ton of activities. Our most attended activity of, of course, of any senior center is bingo. That's the go-to. So we started parking lot bingo during COVID. We actually made national news and was on MSN's front webpage. And so we purchased a radio transmitter. And if you're in our parking lot under Colorado State gaming laws, we cleared it with the Secretary of State, you can still play bingo. So we have that. However, the last like three bingos got canceled because it only snows on days we're having bingo, I determined. And our caller is um, an older gentleman and I'm not gonna have him freeze to death just for an afternoon activity. We've also done other parking lot activities. We've had concerts where people can listen over their radios. Uh, I am a total unicorn dork, like a five-year-old girl. Um, my whole office is decorated in unicorns and we actually rented unicorns that seniors could come out and pet and take pictures with. And they were real unicorns. And we had a trunk or treat activity where um, we had vendors come in parking spots. And so seniors could go around to community resources during COVID and still get out of the house, but in a safe way. When we reopen, we'll of course bring back all of our other activities. Um, we are looking forward to reopening so we can have our health and fitness classes. During COVID, we don't have any currently. 
However, um, there may be an underground one that meets at the park to do Zumba, just not under our, it's not our official activity, but our seniors may be meeting underground to do some activities. There's quite a few underground groups right now. Um, the travel club, we were traveling in some safe groups up until about October when the numbers skyrocketed again. So our trips have been paused, but we're already planning trips for this summer and fall. Just due to the vaccination rate, we feel that we'll be able to, again, go on trips. And the seniors who are in the travel club um, are raring to go. I think they would all load up on the van and pay any fines we got if we got caught. But we're being, we're being, responsible um, senior center and not doing that right now. We normally have community resources in the building. Right now we're doing referrals only and they're still meeting with the seniors via Zoom, phone calls or in person if necessary. And then we also dispatch um, Fountain Municipal Transit out of our building. And one thing we worked out with the city of Fountain now is anybody that's a member of the Fountain Valley Senior Center gets to ride um, City of Fountain Transit for free. So any senior in our community also gets to ride City Transit at no cost to them. Um, some of the challenges we've had during COVID, oops, sorry, I, I'm like click happy over here, is we have been closed for more than a year. We did transition meal pickup, we transitioned from congregant meals to meal pickup and delivery. Anybody that rode the bus in to eat at the center, we now deliver directly to their home. We also added a snack day where I have two staff members um, deliver snacks to the seniors that normally would ride in all the time. That way it gets an increased socialization visit per week. So they actually get two visits from our staff per week so that they're not as isolated. We have increased food security. Um, so isolation was really kicking in in June, and we came up with this great idea, friendship visits, where we could have two seniors on a vehicle, so we would pick up two seniors and take them to the park so they could visit with one another. However, we had to cancel those visits, because when we went to go pick up our two lovely seniors, they had called all their friends, and there was about 25 seniors at the park not wearing masks, all around each other. And then here's our boss with like a group of seniors and it looked like we organized it. So um, if they wanna do underground activities, that's fine. They can do whatever they want. We're just not gonna be a participant in the underground senior citizen activities right now. Um, and we are looking to restart socially distanced field trips when we're allowed. We have instituted some Zoom programming, but we have found our seniors are not very um, wanting to participate in Zoom activities. So since we already paid for this active living program, we now send it also to the Color Springs Senior Center and invite them to join on because we've already paid for it. So we might as well get as many seniors as possible. And then my aunt in Denver, she's very active in a lot of senior groups. So I send her the link and she gets all her friends to jump on too. So now we have like a statewide active living program available. Um, we do calls of a reassurance. So my staff and volunteers have probably made over 10,000 phone calls since the start of the pandemic. Anybody that wants a call, we call at least once a week to check in on them, give them any referrals or take out extra food or whatever they need. And really, they just like that somebody is calling to check on them. And, um, and some of them love to gossip. So they love those phone calls to check on everyone. And I really can't wait to have you guys back to the senior center. Cause when we first started the pandemic, we thought, you know, it's gonna be four weeks. So we hurried up and did a makeover at the senior center. And for those of you that came there last year or the year before, you know, it kind of looked like a eighties nursing home that wasn't very, beautiful at all. And so now we completely did a makeover and we went from the 80s to farmhouse chic. So when the seniors do come back, they get to come back to a 
much more appetizing and beautiful center. They deserve to have somewhere that is in this century and not stuck in the 80s. So now it's really nice and we have like cute signs and it's just much better. And we also got my favorite part of COVID because I'm all about finding the benefits to stuff. So the main benefit to COVID for me is we, I finally convinced my board to get rid of the chairs that we had that were upholstered and um, not very sanitary. And now we have much more comfortable seats that are a little wider for anyone that's put on those COVID pounds and can be completely sanitized. So there's no more cushion chairs because they were disgusting. Um, and I just wanted to share with you guys some of the pictures of our COVID accomplishments. So we have some parking lot bingo pictures and then um, of Unicorn Day, we've had some great positive publicity. One of my favorite, this, um, the parking lot bingo with the woman with the curly hair, her and her friend crack me up because they have taken every COVID precaution possible. And so the only time those two are with each other is for bingo. But the driver sits in the front driver's seat and then Cindy sits in the back passenger seat. So they socially distance as much as possible, even in the same vehicle. So they're like the poster children of what they should be doing. They are so cute. And then um, for those of you that have been on rack for several years, you will know that the one ride system has been... Um, not very user friendly to the seniors in our community it is more like the seven call system than the one call system. So during COVID, Silver Key and Vita and us actually have combined our route match database systems and we have combined our dispatch systems through Ring Central. So now when you call one of our agencies, if our dispatcher is busy, it will roll over to one of the other agencies. And any three of our agencies can go into the route match system. And if we're at capacity for the day, we can then turn around and book the ride on one of our partnership sister agencies. So now when a senior calls, it really is one ride, but the one ride number does still work. It goes to the main dispatch. So we're not getting rid of that. And now it's much more user friendly for seniors. You do have to go through some pom prompts when you call, but when you hang up, if there is a potential ride for you in the PPACG, the AAA area that you guys fund, you will know before you hang up if you're gonna have a ride or not. So it has made it much more effective and we can utilize our resources better through geographic locations. Like if they call us, but we know they're closer to Invita, we can book it on Invita's system. So we're not having as many deadhead miles. Um, one of my favorite parts of COVID is I might have been able to convince two agencies to give me a lot of money to make the purchase for Emmett. He is a Labradoodle puppy who I'm currently babysitting and he's usually loud. So I'm really excited that he's being quiet. But um, Zimmerman Properties and United Healthcare contributed to purchase him. And he is in training to become a therapy dog at the senior center, which we think will really help when people get number one agitated in like early dementia stages when people are starting to become argumentative with their friends. It'll be nice to just redirect them to go visit with Emmett. Um, we're gonna have him trained where he can go to nursing homes and hospitals. So when our seniors do, are in the hospital, we can visit with Emmett for some continuity of familiarity while they're gone. So he is um, a teenager right now and dog teenagers are about as lovely as human teenagers. And so it's kind of good that we're still closed because he um, is a little ornery at the moment. But that's all my updates for you guys and um, it's just wonderful to see all of you again. And again, just thank you so much for your continued support of Fountain Valley Senior Center and funding, because we do have over 850 members in the Fountain Valley area that we serve and more than a thousand seniors we serve through transportation. And without your support 
we wouldn't be able to do it. So thank you so much. Well, thank you, Jolene. Do we have questions from our members? Not so much a question, but a comment. Uh, uh, about 30 years ago, wife was involved with Houston. The mayor provided a uh, calling service where home, especially homebound and elderly, wife would call them every morning between a certain period of time. And if they were gonna be gone, they'd let her know. But if she didn't get a response, she call, had a number she called and they, somebody went out and checked on them just to see what was going on. And it sounded like you have something similar to that going on. Oh, you went out. Um, we can't hear you anymore, but I will let you guys know the calls of reassurance has been a huge thing. And we do plan on continuing to ask for funding for that even post COVID for something very sim um, similar to what you are talking about is the seniors that can't, that aren't driving anymore and have less social interaction. We would like to maintain um, more social interaction with them via the phone. And then um, we might even, like I said, I love to give people sugar, even though I probably shouldn't. So we will probably keep up where we send um, treats as well, just for more human interaction and um, checking on people. Okay, I don't, know. I don't know what happened to my audio. Is it there now? Yes. Okay. I say uh, she'd call every, this person every morning between, I think, between 6.30 and 7. They set up a time. And if she did not get a response, she called the uh, mayor's office, had a phone number, and they'd send a policeman or somebody out to check on them, see if there was a problem, which when somebody's living alone like, like I am, something can happen and uh, you don't get them. So what we tend to do more than um, staff calling every morning is we um, match up people. So we have a lot of seniors that call each other every right. morning. And then well, if they is... don't get a hold of the senior, they call us and either me or Mark goes out to the house to see if like maybe they just slept through the phone call. And we had one where we couldn't get a hold of the person. We tried to call all the emergency contacts. So then we did call the sheriff's office to come out and do a welfare check. And it turned out the woman, her daughter had surprised her, came into town and was remodeling her house for her. But the, rem the poor remodeler showed up when there's all these cops there. And then the daughter showed up and the daughter normally lives out of state. And the daughter was just so grateful that she had a commute, her mom had a community where if they didn't hear from her, that was the response. Like we were making sure she hadn't fallen or passed away or anything during the night. So it really made her, her daughter more comfortable going back home to her state once the house was remodeled because she knew her mom was being looked after in her home. Well, this was the sort of thing where volunteers would call a certain person and uh, if they didn't get a response, somebody went out to check on them. So yeah. it, uh, it sounds like that'd be a fairly easy thing to set up yeah. across the whole area. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Absolutely. It does. Other, other questions, comments? Well, Jolene, we really uh, appreciate your presentation. I, it, it's so great to see how you've adapted during COVID and you st sound like you're still connected to your seniors. It's, it's wonderful. Uh, I love the collaboration regarding transportation, uh, the fun, fun activities in the parking lot. <laughs> oh. I forgot to say, you all are very instrumental in the homebound seniors getting their vaccinations. So all the seniors who get the homebound meals funded through the AAA, we turn that list of names over to El Paso County. And now the firemen are going individually to the homes and giving them the Johnson & Johnson shot. So it's a one-stop visit. And so anyone that was eligible for home delivered meals is going to be eligible to get an in-home vaccination. So you guys really helped ensure that the most vulnerable seniors in our community will be vaccinated. So thank you. 
Wonderful. I'm glad that worked out so well for your seniors. Yeah. Terrific. Well, thank you again, Jolene. Yeah. We really appreciate it. Okay, we're going to uh, move on to, I, I don't see Marilyn Bradish here, so let's move on to Jen. Can you tell us about our, the strategic review subcommittee? Hi, I'll do my best. I'm having some technical problems and not able to get into my computer or internet. So I'm on my phone and kind of trying to wing it. Um, we had a really great meeting session back in February. Um, it ended up taking two different separate meetings to cover all of the materials and have found some really great progress that's been made that overlaps with the strategic plans and the four-year plan. So um, once I've got some more details and can get access to that, I'll report back to the group and I apologize that I just, I cannot get into my system right now and sure wish I could because we had some really great feedback there that came back from the group. So thank you to all who participated. Okay, if you uh, get access during the meeting, just let me know, Jen, and, and we'll bring you up later on, okay? Sure will, thank you, B. Sure. Okay, Melissa, did Jody leave us any uh, director's report? He did, um, and I saw that I think someone came online with a phone number, and I'm wondering if Elaine, or that's probably Jen actually, right? Um, but there is another phone number, and so I'm just wanting to double check. Maybe Elaine got on. Um, yes, hi, I'm here. It's Elaine. Love it. Okay. Love it, love it. Um, so I'm going to share uh, two things, I guess. First, I am going to make a comment about membership uh, because Marilyn Bradish is uh, traveling with her family. She's happy she can be doing that, and she is doing that. And she wanted to do a reminder to our, our members to consider joining membership. Uh, you know, it's her right now. And I will um, spill the beans a little bit that Joe Ruth um, has shared some really innovative ideas around um, bringing more people of color onto the rack. And we'll be sharing those ideas with Marilyn and eventually B too. Uh, so if anyone is interested, um, membership needs uh, some support and would love to have um, people joining that group with Marilyn. Um, then I'm also going to share a little bit about TRS, and I'm going to turn it over to Melody in a second. Um, Chris Larson, you know we have actually been missing her lately um, on the rack. She has also been traveling. Her daughter got married. Uh, all kinds of exciting things in her life that conflicted with the time that the rack was meeting. She is still the chair of the TRS, and the TRS is going to be meeting in the near future. So. Uh, if that's something um, that people are interested in participating in, that's the process where um, the RAC is responsible for looking over all the applications um, from our providers and helping to determine where the funding should go and how that should look. Uh, so that being said, I do want to just turn it over to Melody for a minute if she has any comments about that and the TRS process, um, just to give her an opportunity to talk if she needs to. And Melissa, could you put us back to the um, view where I can see everyone? Sure, you bet. Thank you. Uh-huh. Everybody, my name is Melody. I'm the Program Services and Contract Administrator here at um, Pikes Peak AAA. And um, I filled the position after Lisa Aldridge retired. So for those of you that I haven't met yet, that's who I am. Um, so we released the RFP. Um, in about mid-February. And so our respondents have until April 15th to get, excuse me, April 16th um, to submit their proposals online. And so far that's going really well. Conducted a training, sent out instructions. We had a few organizations that haven't partnered with us before um, who are submitting proposals as well. And so Jody is planning to schedule a TRS meeting um, sometime hopefully in uh, I want to say end of April to early May, so that our goal is to have the contracts reviewed and executed by July 1st. So in the past, um, our contracts have been executed around September, and the state fiscal year begins July 1st, and so we're trying to move that timeline up 
just to make it more streamlined internally and also easier for the approved providers um, to be able to submit reimbursements and to have that full year without any contract amendments or anything like that um, to submit reimbursements and be on that state fiscal year. So that's just a brief outline. Does anybody have questions for me about the process or timeline? So the um, members of TRS will be hearing from you then in terms of dates to meet and that yes. type of thing. Now, yes. Jody had said something about only one meeting in the past. We always had several. Where, where are we on that um, plan? Yes, so from what I understand, we had uh, two to three meetings to review those. And our goal is to bring that down to one. And so to get as much information from the providers, so we will internally review all of the proposals and get information so that we can answer as many questions as possible um, during that meeting. And then any follow-up questions, actually email those out. So trying to be respectful of everybody's time and not go too into the weeds as far as um, things like cost per unit and those kinds of things, because we do have a strong finance team that looks through all of those and make sure that what the proposers are suggesting for their reimbursement rates actually line up with um, those historical numbers that we've had in the past. And then we'll also be sending out, um, you'll probably see that from me, I'll either send that out via email or through a Google Docs drive um, so that all of you can take a look at the proposals. And those will include just like last year, a brief description from the proposer about their organization, um, their program, what they want the AAA funding for, um, how many people they plan on serving for the year, and then the regions within our, um, our AAA region four for the three counties where they'd like to serve. So trying to give you all a good amount of time to review those ahead of the meeting um, and come prepared with questions. And also I'm available too for anything that doesn't get answered for um, email or phone conversation where I can follow up with the providers as well, just so we make sure that all of your, your questions are answered. Okay, well, we'll look forward to that. Um, thank you to Joe Ruth for stepping up to um, become a part of that TRS committee. Really appreciate that. If there's any other member that, um, would like to join. I, th I believe we still have a um, position or two available um, on that. And I'll also, um, I'll put my email address too into the chat in case anybody, if you think of questions after the meeting um, today and you'd like to follow up with me. Great. I think like I said last time, it's, it's a really um, wonderful uh, way to really understand, you know, who, what, what services our providers are providing, uh, how many people they serve, um, and um, costs, I guess, basically related to that a whole process, what it costs to make, to provide those services. Um, it's, uh, I, I found that uh, I, I learn an awful lot each time um, that I serve on the committee. So I encourage anybody who, who likes that sort of thing to join us. Just uh, send an email to, um, who do you want that sent to? Melody or Melissa? And please copy me so that I know that as well. Okay, so anything else, Melissa? Did we cover it, everything? I have one more thing to share. Okay. Um, so this is a report that was put out by the state AAA. Um, and you guys can all see this, correct? There's a Colorado yes. Area Agencies on Aging at Work. Yes. So this was a publication that, gosh, a couple of months ago, the state AAA kind of pulled all of the uh, AAAs across the state on how things were going, um, a snapshot of our responses to COVID-19. And so I'll email this out to everybody. Um, Jody just wanted uh, to make it make everybody aware of some of the comments in here and uh, ideas that have been shared. And so, uh, you know, as we kind of have heard and know, we definitely had to shift gears on many levels. And now it's kind of been documented in this uh, in this 
in this piece of work, which is nice to actually have this as record going forward and a reminder of how people, you know, really twisted and shifted um, at, on a dime. And Jolene's presentation, you know, reminds us of that in terms of the types of services and supports and how we, we changed those up. And we're able to do that because of the flexibility as funding came through. Um, and that was, you know, really the direct response to the declaration <laughs> to make us an emergency disaster zone. Um, sorry, I'm kind of not getting my words out right here, but you know, it was interesting. I remember back a year ago when this started and I was just waiting and waiting and watching and watching for that declaration to come through because as I was able to listen in at the national level on the AAA, you know, work, they were saying, as soon as your governor declares your state a national emergency, you will have access to funding that's going to open the doors to not have to be siloed anymore. And so it was just waiting, waiting, waiting for Governor Polis to make that happen. And then once he did, it really made all the difference for the organizations to be able to use the money in different ways. So this, um, this publication really shows that. And let's see, I think I have one particular page I wanted to show here. Um, so throughout the, the publication, there's different pictures of our, our people in El Paso County, primarily, because we don't have a lot of good pictures from Park and Teller County. Uh, we need to work on that. But we have some images showing um, services that were happening and people doing good work. And so excited to see that we had a presence in this publication and that they really did a good job talking about the response and getting the services out to people that needed it. So again, I will email this out to the RAC members and if anybody else wants a copy of it, you can shoot me an email and I'll put my email in the chat for the people who are from the community if you wanted to get a copy as well. So um, that's what I wanted to share with you guys today. And does anybody have any other comments or questions about the COVID response and, you know, the fact that we are a year later now um, and moving ahead with the vaccines, which is great. Um, but any other comments or questions? All right, well, with that, I'll turn it back over to B. Okay. Um, I just, um, as part of the chair report, I just wanted to um, bring to mind, um, you know, I, I volunteer each week answering phone calls and it's, it sort of has amazed me through this whole process how the phone calls to AAA really are an excellent, excellent indicator of the current senior needs. Um, for example, in the last couple of weeks, you know, I got a call from, from a senior who was homebound and wanted to know how to get the uh, vaccine. Well, sure enough, I talked to Jody and he says, oh, we're working on that. And then, um, and as we've heard this morning, um, Fountain Valley uh, is getting all those seniors vaccinated that are homebound. And last night on TV, I saw a story about the um, fire department personnel going out and, and um, vaccinating homebound seniors. So it's, it's it's, in, it's interesting to me that even though maybe you only get one or two calls regarding a topic, it, it's actually, a, you know, you're measuring the pulse of the community um, on whatever particular issue might be out there right now. And, and I once again want to compliment all the organizations and how they've adapted during this period of time. Um, I, I also wanted to bring, since, since Marilyn wasn't here, I, I just wanted to bring up the notion of, um, you know, we've got pretty good um, 
geographic representation on the rack right now. We do need an Eastern um, El Paso County representative. So we definitely will be looking for someone there. Um, but um, so I, I think we, we hear from um, quite all the areas um, regarding what the needs are and how we might in the future extend services to those various areas. Um, and I think one of the things you've heard is that we want to work a little more on represent, representation of different populations here. One of the things I noticed in looking e even on, on our list that our, our representation our, by our, our male representation has gone down dramatically. So we probably need to bring that up again too. But also, uh, I, we definitely need a greater representation by people, communities of color as well. Um, so if you have someone in mind that you would like to recommend, uh, contact Marilyn Bradish because she's our, our membership chair. Uh, that's all I have today there. Um, we don't have any action items, uh, discussion items. Um, do we have any information on the adopt the senior project? I know. Um, did we, Elaine? No, we uh, B, we don't have anything. No, there's nothing new, B. We don't have anything else. Um, just still kind of waiting. I was supposed to try and meet with Marilyn, but again, she is on vacation and we just couldn't connect. So uh, hopefully we'll have something next month. Sounds good. Okay, any other discussion items that any member wants to bring to our attention? Okay, seeing none. Um, calendar of events. Does anybody have an event coming up? We used to have lots of them. And now with COVID, we don't have so many, but any event coming up that anybody wants to tell us about? Oh my, no wonder I'm stuck at home day after day. Melissa? So I might put Pamela on the spot to just do a quick reminder about our social security uh, 101 classes and the Medicaid, uh, Medicare Lunch and Learns, uh, if she's out there, um, because I don't have that schedule in front of me right now, but we do have these ongoing because of Zoom now. And so if yeah, she has- Yeah, I'm comments. here. All right. Um, the the, the uh, second in a series of the Social Security 101 classes will be held this Monday, March 29th at four o'clock to 5.30 with Josh Weller, who is our Social Security um, representative. Uh, again, this is about our fifth year that we've been working with Social Security. So we're really excited about um, these sessions. The other thing that we have going that will be happening next month, actually about a month from today on April 26th, also on a Monday, is we're starting our ENT retirement series. We will be kicking off with the estate planning with Skip Morgan doing that presentation. All of these sessions are free and open to the public and you can register online and you'll get a link then that you can join the Zoom meeting. We will have a, to use a favorite word of mine, we'll have a plethora of handouts for the retirement series this year and particularly in the estate planning. Uh, we've been working with the Colorado Bar Association and have been able to, to get a list of those those attorneys who might be interested in that, that kind of topic. And when I say that, I'm talking about the fact that we are projecting to the state of Colorado this time. We're not just focusing on El Paso County or Park and Teller. Um, we are focusing on the entire state of Colorado. And Jody has been instrumental in getting the Colorado AAAs involved. And so we will have a list of all of the Colorado AAAs. We'll have a list of all the ships in Colorado so that when people hear about Medicare, 
101 and they hear about social security and estate planning and then the psycho um, social aspects of retirement, they will have a reference of someone in their, in their uh, county, in their corner that they can turn to because obviously um, SHIP for us now serves nine counties, AAA serves three counties. But if someone lives outside that county, we wanted to have a resource for them that they can go to to get more information. So um, that's that's what's happening. The retirement sessions will happen on the 26th of April. And then we will have a fall session. There are two sessions this year and they will be consecutive on Mondays. You can go into the website, um, ppacg.org slash events and get all the details. And I'm sorry, if I'm rambling, <laughs> I just wanted an opportunity to make sure people knew um, about the program. So I wasn't expecting to, to talk. So thank you very much for allowing me to do so. Well, congratulations, Pamela, for extending this to the estate. That's a big, big move there. That, that's well, wonderful. That, thank you, B. That was really uh, an initiative that was started, uh, you know, and has been our partner for seven years. This is our seventh year of doing the series. And it was it was through uh, through the team's meeting and suggestion of, well, why don't we why don't we see if the state get, we can reach out further? So um, I cannot take the credit for that. I certainly have worked on that team and helped to make it happen. But um, it's, uh, it's pretty exciting this year. It's, it's going to be a whole different, um, a whole different aspect. So we, we encourage each and every one of the RAC to check out these, these webinars if you haven't attended them. Whether you're, you know, it doesn't make any difference if you're already in retirement or not. We would love your feedback. Um, and we have a survey at the end. Give us your feedback. Um, tell us. Tell us what you think needs to be done, you know? Um, that's all I have, I guess. Well, thanks a lot, Pamela. And B, I'd like to add one more thing to the calendar as a reminder for folks. Um, May is Older Americans Month. And by the time the RAC meets again, it'll be right before May 1st. Uh, the theme for Older Americans Month this year is Communities of Strength. And as of right now, I don't have any grand ideas for anything to happen during Older Americans Month. In times past, I have. And I just will put that out there for people as you go through your next couple of weeks. You know, just kind of put that in the back of your mind and remember that, you know, May an opportunity to, you know, draw awareness and talk about, you know, the idea of communities of strength. Uh, with folks that um, are our older adults that we all work with. So that's all I have, B. Okay. And I'm going to ask you a, a favor. Um, um, could you leave the chat up for a few moments after we um, adjourn, just so people can copy down whatever they, any resource that they want to copy down? I find my I find myself so involved in the meeting that then suddenly I haven't had time to to copy somebody's email down or something. What is the date for our next meeting? Is that the 22nd or the 29th? It's the 22nd. It's always the 4th. That's the 4th. Okay. Fourth Thursday. We changed that uh, so we could be more consistent. So it's the 4th. So it's yes, our next meeting is April 22nd via Zoom at 10 a.m. just like this one. Um, our executive committee meeting is the first Tuesday at 10 a.m. and that's our committee chairs and our officers for that meeting. Anything else before we go? Hi, B. This is Rosemary. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I just put in the chat our April schedule for um, for our classes, our education classes, all our classes are free. We also have our support groups. Um, Cynthia is one of our support group facilitators. So if you wanna hang out with her a little bit, you can hang out with her. Um, and she's also doing um, one of our April classes, isn't that correct, Cynthia, um, on COVID. And so um, 
please take advantage of these free resources and share with your community. Wonderful, thank you. Alzheimer's Association is a very much needed program. <laughs> we have, what is it, by the time you're 85, there's a, what is it, 65, 60% chance of get, having one of the over 70 different kinds of dementia. So, <clears throat> but it's very high. So we need that, you know, that agency here. Okay. Well, with that, then, thank you for uh, attending today. We appreciate it. Appreciate our speakers and other um, people who have contributed to today's meeting. Um, and uh, we'll see you next month, April 22nd. And the meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, B. Bye now. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Bye. Have a good day. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everyone. Good to see everyone. Happy spring. I think there's a, is, if I click on file, then I can download the chat, right? Isn't that how that goes? I think the little three dots that say more. Oh, more. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Or on the chat itself, there's a three dots. Yeah, uh, all mine has is this file. So presumably uh, I downloaded it. <laughs> I know I should know how to do that, B, but I don't know that I do. And I'm looking at it right now just to kind of see. Yeah, this, this reminds me, you know, I've been chair of lots of committees. And what I find is, you know, you're so busy running the meeting, you don't <laughs> get a chance to. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. So you hope somebody else is keeping an eye on that chat, too. Right, right. Yeah, I appreciate that you do that, Melissa, that you keep an eye on But even chat. though I tried, there was still a piece that I missed in here today, darn it. Um, oh, well. So, all right. The speakers are doing a great job of staying within the, you know, like a 20 minute time period. Thank you for <laughs> encouraging them to do that. <laughs> Ryan, yep, yep. No, they're doing a good job. I I noticed that. You know, I I would sort of set a time. You know, I write down the time that they start and sort of see where they're ending. And they're doing they're doing a good job. So that's great. I mean, be, our meeting went fast today, but that's we haven't had any action items for a while and so forth. So yeah. yeah. Well, thanks for all you do, Melissa. Really appreciate you. Thank you, B, and we'll be in touch and back Thank in you. front of each other here next week or whatever it is. So, <laughs> right, right. All right. Take care. Okay. Bye now. Thanks. Bye.